Hello everyone, this is Lori from Grammy's Keepsakes and I'm coming to you today with a tutorial of how I made this tri-envelope Christmas journal. And I have it tied with a, a charm on the end of the string and I just have it wrapped around a couple of times. A season of joy. I made this with three envelopes. And it has two journals and three file cards that I made for your journaling or photos. I used the envelope punch board for this. And here's one of the little journals. Has a photo mat or journaling card inside. Pages of tea dyed paper, some of them stamped. I used a three hole pamphlet stitch. In another side pocket and you can use it for journaling, list making, photos and here's a, a look at the bottom one. And it's the same inside. tea dyed paper. I thought the tea dyed paper looked nice with the rustic theme of this Christmas winter holiday journal. And it lives inside this bottom envelope. And you can put photos on here as well. And then we just, I used a crochet cotton or you can use any kind of a wax linen or anything. And just wrap it around and around the disc. So let's go ahead and put one together. I have three red envelopes and what we're going to do is I opened up their flaps. We're going to put glue on the flap. And I'm using art glitter glue that dries clear. And place an envelope right on top. Line it up. Do not cover the score marks. Want to make sure that it folds nice. We're going to do the same thing to add the third envelope. I love this little narrow point on this glue that you don't get too much. And again, not on the score mark, score line. Looks like I've got it a little bit over the score line on this one. Hard to see the bifocals there. 
Oh, much better. Okay. So it's going to fold up just like this. And this will come over it. Now, let's decorate. And. For this side, what I've done is I just measure the envelope and I want it to be, everybody's envelope is going to be a little bit different. But I just cut it smaller so that there's a margin around and this is thinner scrapbook paper. It is not cardstock. So I'm going to use Fabri-Tac so that it I don't get ridges and bumps. Fabri-Tac is an acetone base, but it's um and so it doesn't saturate the paper, but it's also like a gel. And I like that. And place it on there, trying to center it so that I get a red frame all the way around. Do the same for this. You could ink or distress the edges if you'd like, but for this traditional Christmas colored trifold envelope, I didn't want to bring in the distressing. For the rust, rustic type, I do like to do that for them. And again, just centering it, trying to line it up. Okay, and then for this one, what I did was I took the paper and I lined it up with the top flap and I traced around it and then I cut. And it's too long, but I leave it like that. Get a pencil so that I can place it to leave that little bit of frame. And then I can mark where I want it to cut it. And I wanted to save that so that you could see where I was going to cut. Okay. Well, and now I can't see my little marks. Okay, there they are. And I'm just using my Fiskars Precision Rotary Trimmer. Okay, that leaves a nice frame. But here I don't have a nice margin here. So I'm going to trim a little bit here with scissors. And it's so much easier to take care of this now rather than after it's glued. See, just a little bit came off. But I like that so much better. Maybe just a tad off of this edge too. Doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing I do is perfect. I just want it to be pleasing to the eye. And now I'm going to go ahead and use a Fabri-Tac. Get it relatively close to the edges, but not too close. I don't want it to ooze out. And 
and the flap is going to get a lot of action. That's our closure. So I want to make sure that there is glue there. Hold that down. And trying to place it. That looks okay. Yeah, pretty good. Can use my bone folder. Press the glue. Make sure everything, yes, it's still in the safe, in the right places. Good. Okay. Front side. What I've done here is I made a paper pattern and let, let me show you that quick. I measured, you know, using the width that I want, but I put the paper inside the envelope and to, to make it slide in better, I just rounded the corners with my half inch side of We Are Memory Keepers corner rounder and it just slides in a little bit easier for me. And I place that inside the envelopes. And seated it in there and placed it so I have the frame and then I just traced the outside of the envelope and because these are purchased envelopes no two are alike and so I've had to do this for each of the three envelopes but now I have a line to cut on to make my pattern. And so that's what I did here. And then for the next one, I did the same thing and the same for all three. So let's go ahead and glue this one on. And it doesn't have to be for Christmas. You can use these for anything. any kind of envelope, any color of envelope. There's no rules. Getting it on there. There. That works. Okay. And I'm going to dry fit my next one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and round those corners again. And I want a liner in the envelope. Putting this in there will make it a little bit easier to see, won't it? And then 
lining it up and it just goes underneath my bottom envelope and onto my middle envelope and it adds a little bit of security or stability there for my fold. So now I want to go ahead and put some glue on this and I don't need to glue the part that's going to be the liner down inside that envelope. It will be enough just to glue the top portion of it. I hope I'm in frames. So you can see what I'm doing. I have a tendency to move it so that I can see it and then you can't see it. So that's not good. So I apologize. And then let it come over, carefully putting it in there. Okay, now we want to line it up. Make sure that I have a border. That white paper inside there sure helps, makes it easier to see. And then just press it down. And now it's not going anywhere. The key is just keep making the paper patterns out of the scrap paper so that you can cut your decorative paper. And there that one is. And see it does not go all the way to the end of the envelope. It doesn't need to because you're not going to get way in there. And I'm rounding the bottom corners again, placing it inside. If I was going to seat it all the way down there, I'm missing about an inch. So we're going to bring it up, make sure that we're good before we apply the glue. Pull it out a little bit, flip it over, apply glue, don't want to fold it, we'd have another crease. I have so many envelopes that coming up, trying to come up with ideas to use them. And I did get the inspiration from this, from um, Gail I, Augusta Nelly, I believe her last name is. I hope I didn't mess that up too bad. But she has a wonderful YouTube channel. And a lot of inspiration. Okay, I'm having trouble getting that in there. Okay, that's getting better. To move it around a little bit so I can get in there. That's better. And bring it up. Press it down. The Fabri-Tac glue dries fast, so I want to make sure that I've got it before it's set up to be too, too much. Okay, I think we're going to be good there. But I see some of my pencil lines from tracing my pattern. 
when I cut it. Just take an eraser and get that off of there. Okay, now for the flat part. I'm going to round those corners. Take out my paper. And I did the same thing for this, for the pattern, but I could trace it from the outside and then just trace it here. This is what my patterns looked like from my scrap paper. So this, this was this little one. I used every little scrap. It nestled inside one of those. So I saved my patterns. Okay, now I'm gonna pull it all the way out and apply the glue. I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom, and I'm having trouble seeing. There we go. The white on the white paper just doesn't show very well, does it? And in that flap, that's where all that action is going to be. So I want to make sure I've got my glue there. I probably over glued this one. Open it up, slide it in, The Fabri-Tac sure gets tacky. That's better. I had it too big of an angle opening. And... Just rub away that glue that oozed out. And now I'm just going to carefully bend my envelopes over because I have that paper there that's going to add stability but also obstruction. So that's why I want to be careful and give it a press, making sure that I get it so it has a natural hinge. And this one also. And with the top flap, what I like to do is get out my scoring board and I've drawn lines with my sharpie at the inch increments down in the grooves for this purpose so that I can line up where I need it to be because it's not always going to be perpendicular so I'm just going to score it at that line and score it again an eighth of an inch or one tick mark over being careful so that I don't puncture and also so that I don't jump off the tracks and I'm going to do one more so I have 
three lines scored, and that's going to give my envelope book a little bit of growth room so that one fold it. Now I'm going to fold it on the next score mark. and on the top score mark. And then work it a little bit. So now when I fold it all, it has kind of a little rounded top on it. And now we're going to make the Nope, I feel a little bit of glue right here. I'm going to make the little journals to go inside our pockets. So, I'm measuring and I've cut out some scrapbook paper, a 12 by 12 sheet. This is one I got from a uh, Michael's Recollections a number of years ago and this envelope is about seven and a quarter so I have cut my scrap of paper six and five eighths and then I scored at one and three fourths and at six and I turned it around and I scored again at one and three fourths. Let's move our envelopes out of the way and then I cut a piece of lighter weight scrap of paper and make sure it has a um, orientation so I want to make sure that this is as well and I cut this at six and five eighths also and then wide enough so that when the flaps come over it's hidden. So now, and I folded it in the center and creased it. Now we can glue this on. And place this in the crease, lining up the top and bottom. Use my bone folder again. Give it a good burnish. If you had double-sided paper, you'd be good. Or if you don't mind that it's just a white, plain back, that's fine too, you don't have to do the extra step. And now, to make these into side pockets, I just want to put a small bead of glue from the edge to the score mark on top and bottom and bring it over. And now I have a little pocket. Same thing on this side. Get the tops back on my glue. And now I have the outside covered to one of my journals. And then I've cut some heavy duty paper. Well, it's not really heavy duty. It's 28 pound premium laser paper because I have a laser printer. 
and so I cut that six and three-eighths long and then it's eight and a half wide so I left that and folded it over. So that's what I'm going to use for my little journal. Fold it in half so that it's all nestled inside the crease. Use a clip. Grab my little ruler and the pencil. And let's find the center. I use my Tim Holtz centering ruler and I'm going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch. So I'm going to mark the center and then I'm going to come down let's mark it about two and a half inches. Well, yeah, two and a half and two and a half again. And now we'll get some cord. I like to use this crochet cotton three times the width. That out of the way. Grab my needle and I use a cruel needle. Um, it's blunt and it has a big eye so that my crochet cotton will fit through. Okay, let's get my pokey tool here. Let's we're gonna use our pencil marks and now I put my pokey tool or all on the little dot, fold it and let it come through. I just kind of work it a little bit and always be conscious of where your fingers are so that you don't get stabbed. Impaling is not part of the journal making, is it? On the little dot. There we go. Now, I'm going to go down from the inside in the center hole, leave a nice tail. I'm going to come to the bottom in that hole through the paper hold my string from the center because we're going to go down that center hole again but we don't pierce the thread that will weaken it so I just go next to it, a little on the upside of it, and poke it through, and then through the top hole. And this side looks good. And now I want to go underneath that loop, bring it over so that I have a thread on both sides. Tie it in a knot again. And now you can just cut it, tie it in a bow, Add a little charm, however you want to deal with the, th the threads. Okay. 
and then unclip it and refold it. The paper that I've used for this is quite thick. It's very nice, smooth. It's beautiful to write on. It's beautiful printing. And now we're going to make a couple of cards to go inside. So I'm going to cut some 110 cardstock, six by four and a fourth. Round my corners. Now I've got journaling cards or photo mats. And this fits right inside this pocket. And this is the journal that I'm going to make for this one. So I'll have two. But let's go ahead and make that little disc that we need here. And I use a three quarter inch punch. And I cut two. Glue them together. So now it's more substantial. Eyeball the center. Get my crocodile. have to change my settings. Okay, the little hole, I'm going to use the 3 16 and I'm centering it inside that hole in the top of the crocodile. Little kitty wampus, but that's okay. And here's my little eyelets that I like to use. And Christmas, let's use a real brassy one. I use a We Are Memory Keepers. I find that these eyelets are almost goof proof. I can't screw it up. The only thing I can screw up, of course, is the centering of it. And I'm really good at that. So that's about where I want it to be. So I'm going to mark it and use my crocodile again. Place it in the center there. Punch my hole. Put my eyelet in my circle. Place it in the hole. And there we go. And squeeze. That's it. And see, it turns out perfect every time. I love it. Then all we need is thread. We can decorate the outside. 
And you can use a thread, a cord, a baker's twine, anything you'd like. I'm kind of OCD about if I feel any bumps or glue, <laughs> sorry. And we're gonna make some cards for this. So I'm gonna cut another piece of the um, 110 cardstock. And I just cut it six and a half wide by in half, five and a half. And To make a file tab, what I like to do is I go down two and a quarter, punch, bring it over here to this side. Do you see where I have the paper is lined up with the edge of this plastic? That's where I want to punch it again. And I get that. And then now here, this I'm just going to trim off. It's about a 3 8 inch. Line it up on your trimmer. And cut that off. And then I use my corner rounder on the quarter inch side and it looks like a file folder. Now for the other one I do the same thing. Bring it over to about two and a quarter. Bring it over. Trim it off. And round the corner. And I'm going to flip it over so they're going to look like that. But I need one for the middle. And so to do that, if my kind of use my ruler. Right about there. I believe it should be about oops, two and a quarter. Yep, oh, two and a half. I'm going to bring it to two and a half, punch it, flip it over, two and a half. Nope, I don't like that. Well, we're going with it. See, it's too little. So let's go over to the other side. That's why I have them too big. Let's go back to the two and a quarter and to the two and a quarter. Much better. Okay. And then I just want to trim off the excess. And then round off my corners, get rid of the punch board, leaves all my little goodies. Now to determine how deep I want this to be. So I think if we can measure five inches, I'm thinking four and three-fourths. Do 
Yes, I like that. So I'm going to cut them both and I measure from here to four and three fourths. and round the bottom corners. Kind of all over the place in this tutorial, aren't I? But I want to make sure that I touch a little bit on everything, I guess. So now I have, and you can use these file tabs as actual file tabs as well, besides journaling and putting pictures. You can put pictures or notes after each of the tabs as well. So we have, so we've done our, our cards. We have one journal completed, one started. We've got our little circle. Let's get some thread. I'll just go ahead and use a crochet thread for now. Need a lot. Well, we probably don't need a lot, but I'll just use a lot so that I don't run out. And I folded it in half, so I have that loop at the top, bring it around that circle, the disc, Tie it, tie it again. You probably already know how to do this. And then wrap it around a couple of times. I'm all tangled up, here we go. There's three times. and around the disc. Then we can get a little charm. There, that'll work. Thread the charm with this cord. And how many times? I went around about three. Okay. About here would be nice. Okay. In order to have room to tie it, I'm going to unwrap it again and just bring an overhand knot. And you don't have to have a charm. You can put a button or you can just leave it too. And cut off the extra. Isn't that cute? Love it! And if anybody is interested in getting envelopes from me, I have all of these luscious colors in different sizes. You can just contact me and I will send you uh, a flat letter full of it for free. You just pay the shipping in uh, any color, every color that you'd like. And just let me know. And I can get almost a couple hundred in one of those flat envelopes. So if you're interested, just let me know. Thank you for watching.